Hi, everybody. My name is Deb Clearwaters. I'm the Director of Education and Interpretation at the Asian Art Museum. And it gives me great pleasure to introduce this Art Bite with our Chief Curator and Curator of Japanese Art, Laura Allen. Good morning. In the past, there were many instances when visual art was used to combat disease. So today we're going to look at a few and um, I thank you for coming along on this journey. Long before masks and ventilators, visual art was used to protect people from disease. An old Buddhist tale from Japan illustrates this point by recounting how a young monk named Shoku was spared from suffering during a grave illness. Illustrations of this moving tale appeared as early as the late Kamakura period, or late 13th to early 14th century, as part of a narrative hand scroll known as Illustrated Legends of the Crying Fudo. The story goes that a senior monk named Choki falls ill and his disciple Shoku agrees to take on his sickness so that his master might be spared. The illness is successfully transferred to Shoku through the intercession of an exorcist. In this hand scroll fragment in the Asian Art Museum collection, the exorcist seated in black robes performs a ritual to transfer the illness. Smoke curls past a long table on which offerings are arranged. Seated before the altar are demon-like ghosts and apparitions that include anthropomorphized household objects. Once the illness is transferred to Shoku, his pain becomes unbearable. A longtime devotee of Fudo Myo, Shoku prays before a painted image of the deity for relief. Witnessing Shoku's flight, Fudo Myo bursts into tears, the painting falls from the wall, and Shoku is released from suffering as Fudo takes on the illness. This scene from a scroll in the Tokyo National Museum collection shows this moment in the story. Here is the scroll curling as it falls from the wall. If you look very carefully, you can see that the painting of Fudo resembles one in our own collection. A second instance of art used to fight disease dates to the first half of the 1800s when three separate smallpox epidemics raged through Edo, more modern Tokyo. With children especially at risk, many families sought protection from woodblock printed pictures known as hosoe, or smallpox pictures, or akae, red pictures. Outbreaks of smallpox and its spread within the population were widely attributed to the activity of noxious spirits known as yakubyogami, plague gods, hosogami, smallpox gods, or tolki, pox devils. At the same time, tutelary spirits, also known as hosogami, were called upon for protection from the disease. The color red was believed to protect from evil and to be especially attractive to these spirits. And the belief that when the smallpox rash turned from purplish to, to red, then recovery was at hand, strengthened faith in the color's magical properties. How are these pictures used? Smallpox prints were meant to calm children who were ill, and they were also talismans used as prayers for a safe recovery. They were attached to a home's door, a post, or a screen near the sick bed. In order to fully banish smallpox, they were generally destroyed, either burned or set adrift on a river, once the patient recovered, and so few of the prints survive today. In San Francisco, the UCSF Library Archive preserves several fine examples. They actually have a wonderful collection of Japanese prints, all on medical themes. It's worth noting that the library where the smallpox prints are housed is located just a few hundred feet from the medical center where coronavirus patients are now being treated. The figures represented in Hosoe are often heroes associated with special physical power and bravery. For example, here is a print of Kintaro, a boy known for his amazing strength. Other prints combine warrior heroes with images of toys and other childlike amusements, which were viewed as a kind of magical antidote for grave illness. This anonymous smallpox print features a life-size red Daruma toy at center, supported on either side by a warrior. To the left is Shoki, recognizable through his Chinese-style costume, and on the right, the archer Tametomo, said to have kept smallpox at bay during a period of exile. The toy with its rounded bottom and distinctive red hooded head is derived from the famous Zen patriarch Daruma, 
also known as Bodhidharma. Dharma fa famously spent so long in seated meditation that his legs atrophied and his eyelids fell away, hence the doll's unblinking gaze. That the dolls return to their upright position after being tilted symbolizes the qualities of determination and steadfastness embodied in Bodhidharma's story. The combined attributes of a red robe and watchful gaze made Dharma a powerful protector. Behind the trio of figures is a simple re rendering of Mount Fuji's conical peak. Japan's foremost sacred mountain, Fuji was also deemed a protective smallpox god. Popular saying likened the raised form of a smallpox scab, a sign of imminent recovery, to the mountain's characteristic shape. By the late 1800s, when smallpox vaccines became widespread, the red prints were mostly a relic of the past. And today, most of us would rather put our faith in masks, ventilators, nurses, and doctors than in a printed talisman or even a painting of Fudeau. But these works call to mind the tremendous power that art has to comfort and heal. And they lead me to wonder, how might artists today picture the forces capable of protecting us from COVID?